Hi class, welcome to lesson number 22. Uh, we're having a um, microeconomics marathon here. We're continuing microeconomics. Um, right now we're covering perfect competition and we'll soon be done with this and move on to uh, more exciting stuff um, like oligopoly, monopoly, and monopolistic, uh, monopolistic competition. Before we do that, um, you know, we have to wrap up perfect competition. Uh, there are a couple things we need to show you guys graphically uh, in terms of you know, how to see a shutdown point, how do you see a profit, um, what happens in the long run versus the short run? Questions like that hopefully will be answered in this lesson. Um, before I jump into any of the new stuff in Perfect Competition, let me recap real quick with the homework question. So the homework question from last class was, um, draw me a graph of the um, Perfect Competition of a market and then show me a firm. So um, I'm going to do just that on the board over here behind me. Um, so perfect competition um, in a market, I believe the example we used from the last class was um, the U.S. wheat market. So, you know, if this was a U.S. wheat market, let me go ahead and label it. And this is in perfect competition. MKT is going to stand for market. Okay. Um, the way we had this was that we said that in a perfect competition, we said they're price takers. All the firms are price takers because they cannot dictate the particular price. So price is kind of set forth by the um, equilibrium that the market creates, right? So there's a demand kind of is downward sloping. It is not perfectly elastic in a market. Remember that that's the tricky part. Um, there's obviously a supply line that's positively sloped just like usual. Now the only thing is that the price line is going to cut through, just go like that. It's supposed to cut through where the equilibrium's at and it's going to dictate what everyone is going to sell their um, prices at. So regardless of how much you sell, all firms must sell at this price point, right? So um, it's going to be Q, right? Now on the, on the right hand side, I'm going to go ahead and draw the um, graph for the uh, single firm, right? The single farmer who makes uh, wheat in this wheat market, right? So this is going to be the single wheat, I'll call it firm, but it could be, you know, um, a farmer or whatever. Um, it's a single wheat firm. Now what we do is we carry on the price from the last one because I remember they're price takers, right? So um, we just go ahead and put a dotted line and then continue the same price level here. The only difference is that this is actually the demand, right? So that's the difference is that in the, in the wheat market, demand was downward sloping and this one is going to be perfectly um, elastic with a little d showing that that's the demand for the um, firm, right? And this is equal to obviously the price because this is price equilibrium, PE, right? This is equal to price, but this is equal to, if you guys remember from last class, it's equal to AR, average revenue, so equal to MR, marginal revenue, um, and um, also equal to P, obviously, because it's we're in, that's the price line. But um, the w one more thing we have to add here from last class we've learned is the marginal cost line, right? Um, we don't have to do it because in the last class I didn't combine the two, and I'll show you guys how to combine them. But you know, for homework answer, this would have been sufficient. The biggest, I think, um, thing that I really wanted to look forward to in this graph from the homework answer is making sure that you guys understand that in the, the demand is only perfectly elastic in the firm and the market is, um, the demand is down sloping. So that's the main point of this. Um, that being said, let's move on to the new stuff in perfect competition. Go ahead and raise this board and kind of describe to you guys how we talk about profit and how we show profit and then show the short run and long run differences in uh, perfect competition. So, perfect competition continued. Uh, here we go. Okay. So, let me go ahead and make sure we all know what we're talking about. Perfect competition. So, the point is to understand what is profit, right? So profit, we've talked about this before. We're talking about economic profit, right? So profit has always been in our equation as total revenue, right? Minus total cost. Now we've always said that, you know, in economics, the implicit costs are also factored into it. 
but for the purpose of this test, when they give you the questions, I mean the data for total cost, they probably are accounting for both implicit and explicit costs. Okay, if they give you different areas and there's like, this is the explicit cost, this is the implicit cost, make sure you factor in both. But for the most part, I believe you're only going to see uh, one total cost column that's going to include both. Um, but, you know, generally speaking, this is the profit equation, right? You've seen this before, total revenue minus total cost, that's how you derive the profit. But one of the things we like to do is um, break this down into um, formulas, right? So total revenue is just price times quantity, right? And in our case, it's the quantity equilibrium, right? It's the amount you sell, right? And total cost, well, total cost is um, going to be the, the total accumulated cost. But one of the things that, you know, is, is used to kind of show you guys the way we drive profit in, in a perfect competition is to show you the fact that um, one of the ways we can rearrange this formula is to divide the whole thing by Q. And what happens when you divide by Q, the whole thing by Q, is that when you divide TR by Q, uh, TC by Q, okay? Um, actually, I'll go ahead and write this formula down. PQE minus TC, right? Um, I'm just gonna take the QE out, okay? So I'm just gonna take quantity equilibrium out, right? So I have to obviously multiply it by P to get PQE. And to get TC, I have to divide by QE, right? Because if you multiply these out, then you get TC back, okay? So this is just simple algebra that we're doing. Now, um, one of the ways we can rewrite this TC over QE is that TC over QE is actually ATC, or average total cost, right? So this just drops down to ATC. So it's P minus ATC times QE is equal to the profit pi, right? in perfect competition, okay? So the way you derive profit in perfect competition is to see if you take the quantity equilibrium, right? And you multiply it by the, you multiply the price, which is being subtracted by the ATC, right? So P times ATC minus ATC times QE will give you profit in perfect competition. Something to remember, uh, it's gonna be pretty key. Um, after this, we're gonna go ahead and show you guys graphically how profit looks like in perfect competition. Okay, so that being said, let's move on to the um, graphic stuff on that side of the board. I'm going to try to see if I can show you first. Let me show you a profit and then I'll show you a loss in uh, short term um, for perfect competition. Okay, so let's start off with profit. Okay, so how do you show a profit, right? So let's use this side. Let's say, okay. So this is a profit example, okay? Well, all right, so we have the basic, um, um, you know, graph, right? Okay, we have that. Now, one of the most important things to ask is, are we talking about the single farmer, right? Are we talking about the single farmer, or are we talking about the entire market of wheat? In this case, we're going to show the profit of the single farmer, okay? So this is going to be the single farmer, okay? Okay, um, you know, I wrote this down a little slanted, but I'm going to go ahead and make sure that you guys don't have to tilt your heads again, hopefully. Um, okay, single farmer. All right, so we're looking at um, quantity over here, price over here, pretty standard microeconomic stuff, right? Um, one of the things we said was that there's a flat or perfectly elastic uh, price elasticity of demand denoted by little d. But a few tricks we learned from last class is that that equals to AR, which equals to MR, right? Which is also equal to P, right? Because this is the price equilibrium set forth by the market, okay? So that was a cool um, thing we learned. The other thing we learned was that there is a marginal cost line that kind of looks like a check, right? That's the MC or marginal cost, right? Um, now, the one of the golden rules I said was in the last class, remember, if you want to remember anything about perfect competition, one of the main rules to remember is that profit maximization occurs where MR equals MC, correct? So I hope everyone remembers that from the last class. Um, please, please, please remember that MR equals MC is the golden rule. So profit is maximized and MR equals MC. Well, let's think about this. This is MC, right? This is MR. MR meets MC right about here. All right, cool. Let's. Um, 
make sure everyone knows where, where I'm talking about, m r equals mc right over there. So what we do is we go ahead and we drop down to see what quantity that is, okay? And this will be my QE, okay? So that'll be my QE. Now, one of the ways we can denote uh, QE is uh, since you're talking about a single um, firm, right, rather than the entire market, you can always use a little Q if you want. It doesn't really matter too much, but you know, if you want to be clear and you're showing two graphs, the market and the firm, um, you probably want to use a little Q. Okay, so we got the quantity. That's cool. So step one, let me write this down here. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and uh, raise this part over here. And I'll kind of write down the steps to kind of finding a, a, on a graph um, a profit or a loss, right? Either way. Okay, so the first part was, what do we say? Um, let me see. Let me write it down right here. Okay, first step was to um, find where MR equals MC. Okay, did we find where MR equals MC? Over there we did, right? We, may, we saw where MC means MR. We did. Check. Okay, cool. Um, that kind of looks like MC. Side note, whatever. Anyways, coming back to our major point, MR equals MC, we found where that was. What was the next step? I said, let's drop down where MR equals MC and let's find the quantity. Okay, so we're going to write just that. Find Q. Or you can say little Q since I told you guys little Q. Um, and this is again where MR equals MC. Okay? So you find quantity equilibrium. Okay? Where MR equals MC. So that's step one. Let's go back to that graph over there. Okay, that being said, I'm going to draw an, I'm going to draw a ATC graph, okay, showing the average total cost. Now I said I'll show you guys a profit, okay? So I'll drop it below the price level, okay? So I'm just gonna wing it here. Kind of looks like that, right? Now again, um, graphically speaking, when you have an when you have an ATC, it should always be intersecting the MC at the minimum point, right? So I'm gonna try to show graphically that that does happen. Kind of looks like that. So it's made to be uh, the minimum point, okay? Um, but anyways, the point is that MC must, that must intersect at the minimum point, okay, of ATC. So this is ATC, guys. This parabola over here is ATC, okay? Uh, so we found the quantity, okay? The quantity is really important, okay? This is the reason why. When you have the quantity, right, we already know the quantity now because that's MR equals MC. We said let's drop down, okay? When you drop down, right, and you have this ATC, it's important you know where you hit where you hit ATC. I'm gonna say that one more time. So MR equals MC, you drop straight down, and when you hit the ATC, you stop. Okay? You stop. So let's go back over here. Step two says when you hit, so drop down, drop down from MR equals MC point, right? And stop when you hit ATC or your average total cost curve. Okay? So, um, sorry about just, you know, moving your head around a lot, but we're all gonna walk over here again. Okay? But point is that we have to do just that. Okay, we're, we MR equals MC, we stop when eight, we hit ATC. What you do then is you, when you take that, from that point on, you try to hit Y, okay? Everyone see the Y axis is right over here? That's the price, okay? So I'm gonna say that one more time. So I said step one, find MR equals MC, we got that. Drop down to find the quantity equilibrium, so we go all the way down, okay, there's a QE. We found what QE was, great. We said the step two was go back to MR equals MC, okay. And we said, drop down and stop when you hit ATC. Okay, I hit ATC, what do I do now? Okay, that's the question, what do I do now? Well, I said try to find the price or the Y axis, okay? So you head, once you hit ATC, you head left and you try to make a rectangle here because you're trying to hit the Y axis, okay? So let me just draw that in real quick, okay? Hopefully everyone sees this rectangle, okay? So try to drop down from MR equals MC, and I try to hit a left, and I hit the y-axis, okay? So this forms a rectangle. Everyone clear? This forms a rectangle. This area right here, okay, between the difference between the price line, right, 
circle this right here, the price line, okay, and the minimum ATC rectangle that we formed, that rectangle right there, okay, is the profit. Why? Because your profit, right, is equivalent to revenue, right, TR minus TC, right? Or we said that for a perfect equilibrium, the way we algebraically broke it down was it's QE times P minus ATC, okay? Everyone understand that? So this rectangle is just that because QE times P minus ATC, well, what is P minus ATC? Let's find P first, okay? P is over here, right, the line over there. What's ATC? Well, this is the ATC curve. We drop down. P minus ATC is right here, this, this vertical length, P minus ATC. M equals MC, that's the point P, right? Right there. Drop down, you said ATC. That difference right there is P minus ATC. Time it by time, I mean, multiplied by Q, right? QE is this distance right here, this horizontal distance. Once you multiply it, you form a rectangle, and that's your profit, okay? And it doesn't, if the ATC is higher, than um, the price line, then you're gonna have a loss, okay? But obviously in this case, we're trying to show a profit, okay? That's the most, more important thing for now, okay? So before I jump into a loss graph, I wanna show you guys the three rules that we use to see if you have a profit, uh, zero profit, or um, a, um, uh, a loss, okay? So let me write that down. Let me go ahead and erase um, this. So. Let me finish up, you know, over here I said first step was MR equals MC, uh, find QE, right, because we're MR equals MC, you drop down, you find QE. Second step was drop down from MR equals MC again, hit the ATC, okay, and then you, you stop when you hit the ATC, and then the third step finally is that once you hit the ATC, I said, um, okay, I'll just write down once you hit ATC, right, um, say head left, okay, head left, and hit Y axis, okay, um, and form rectangle, okay, I'm just going to draw a rectangle here so everyone can, so writing it down, okay and you form the rectangle, and that's your profit or your loss, okay? So these three steps will make you guys, make it hopefully easier to kind of graph a perfect competition. When you're given in a single firm, you say, okay, we'll try to find the profit. You can do it, hopefully, okay? So these are three steps. Now let me write the, the three rules that we have to show if you have a profit, a loss, or a zero profit, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, Erase um, the steps over here. Hopefully, you guys understand it by now. I'm going to keep that graph intact on the on that side. But for now, I'm just going to erase this and use the side of the board to explain the three other rules. I'm going to try to tell you guys to see. Okay, do I have a profit? Do I have a loss? How do I know? Well, hopefully, this is going to help you guys guide you through that. I understand the perfect competition is not not the most exciting topic in the world, but it's important to understand perfect competition really well because I guarantee it's going to be on your test. There is, I think, um, you know, I was reading up something and they said that in the past couple of tests I've always had, um, you know, a perfect competition uh, question. So make sure because I guarantee it's going to be on the test. Um, so what are the three rules? How do we know if there's a profit? Well, okay, so if there's a profit, right, typically speaking, right, if total revenue is greater than total cost, you have a profit, right? Profit is greater than, excuse me, profit is greater than zero, right? That's how you normally write it down. Well, another way of writing it down in our case is that total revenue is greater than total variable cost, right? Because your fixed costs are going to be um, always constant, one, and two, even if you produce zero output, you're always going to have fixed costs, right? We said the only thing that changes is your total variable costs and your variable costs are really important. So if your total revenue is greater than your TVC, we said that to a certain degree, we said that pi is gonna be greater than zero. Profit is gonna be greater than zero. All right, so, um, let me make sure I have everything uh, that you guys wanna know. All right, okay, here's the bottom line, okay? The bottom line is we had an ATC graph. Forget all of this using you know, graphically speaking, right, 
this is all generically speaking, but graphically for perfect competition, there's three simple things, okay? We said find the price, okay? We know the price, all right? If P is greater than ATC, okay? Say that one more time. If P is greater than ATC, profit is greater than zero, okay? Price is greater than ATC, profit is zero. Obviously, the inverse is profit is less than ATC, right? Profit, I mean, if P is less than ATC, profit is less than zero, right? P is less than ATC, profit is less than zero, okay? Now, if you can probably guess what happens when P equals ATC, your profit is equivalent to zero. Another term they use for zero profit, okay, is called normal profit. Don't ask me why, they just call it normal profit, okay? Another economic term. So if profit is equal to zero, it's called normal profit, okay? So P is greater than ATC, pi is uh, greater than zero, or profit is greater than zero. P is less than ATC, profit is less than zero. And then P is equal to ATC, profit is equal to zero, okay? So that's the way you know if uh, you have a profit or a loss. That being said, let's go ahead and graph a, um, a loss on, in a perfect competition, okay? So let's, go, let's graph a loss, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase this. Hopefully this should be enough for our new graph. Okay, so let's have a y-axis and x-axis. This tradition, right? We have a, this is your price, quantity, nothing has changed, right? It's gonna look very similar to that last graph we just drew, but one key difference is that we're gonna have a loss, okay? So we're still gonna have a, pro, a price line, right? And your price is still equal to your, your little d, right? Your demand is your price, right? This is PE, right? Um, that's still equal to your AR, equal to your MR, nothing has changed to that certain degree, right? Um, you still have a marginal cost line that looks exactly the same, right? MC, right? Where MR equals MC, you find that spot right there. We are step one. So step two was to drop, I mean, uh, step one was drop down, find quantity equilibrium where that happens, okay? Um, Let's draw, in an, let's draw in an ATC, or an average total cost curve. Um, it's gonna look something like this for this example. Intersected through the minimum point. This is your ATC, right? Notice that in this case, ATC is higher than price, and the other one, ATC was lower than price. Important difference. Okay, cool, we found that. Next step was to find where MR equals MC. Okay, we got that. Try to hit ATC. Okay, if there's a loss, you go up for ATC. If there's a profit, you go down for an ATC. So hit ATC. Okay, stop. Okay, we got no, second step down. We said head left and hit the y-axis or price. Okay, we got that. Now form the rectangle. Guess what that is? That's your loss, okay? Okay, that's your loss. Now... How do we find it? Well, we said that loss or you know profit, right? A profit, I mean, a loss is just another way of saying profit is less than zero, okay? It's just an easier word to say, a loss, okay? But if profit is less than zero, the same thing as saying you have a loss, right? Now, the way you find profit, I said remember from the last equation was that it's quantity equilibrium times the price minus the ATC. Well, we found what the price was, right? We subtract from the ATC, in this case it's actually negative because ATC is bigger than the price, right? And we multiply by the quantity, so this, this whole part is the quantity, the horizontal part, and we formed ourselves a rectangle, okay? So this is how we formed a, um, a um, loss, right? So this area right here is a loss for this particular uh, firm, or firm, whatever you want it, because this is a wheat farm, right? This is a single firm, and that's how you have a loss. How do we know if it's a loss? Well, the ATC is greater than the, uh, in the, in the P, right? And we knew it was a loss. Okay, obviously the one other scenario is what if um, this ATC, right, was exactly where MR equals MC? What would happen, right? So what would happen, I can draw this out. So this is a new example, okay? Uh, should be pretty straightforward for you guys, but I'll do it anyways. Um, what if your ATC kind of look like that, 
right? What if your ATC looked like that? What would happen? Well, your ATC is intersecting MR equals MC at its minimum point, okay? Um, so at this point, basically, P is equal to ATC. What does that mean? We have normal profit or zero profit. Same thing, normal profit or zero profit, all right? So zero pi or normal pi. Pi is profit, okay? So that's the three scenarios we have. We showed you a profit, we showed you a loss, and we showed you guys um, a normal profit situation as well. So a zero profit situation, okay? So, I mean, basically it was based on these three rules. We said if P is greater than ATC, we'll have positive profit, less than vice versa, you, you probably got this by now. But understand this, these graphs, because I guarantee they'll make you draw one. And um, you know you should be prepared to draw one. And they're pretty simple and straightforward and pretty intuitive. Um, you know, so in a lot of ways, perfect competition is actually um, easy to graph and to understand because they're, they're you know, as they say, it, they make it very simplified, right? So that four characteristics that we talked about from the last class about perfect competition, things are pretty you know, simple when it comes to perfect competition. And that's why it's pretty intuitive in drawing um, you know, different scenarios. So take some time and practice those graphs. With that being said, I'm gonna start talking a little bit about um, the shutdown point, okay? So you know, we talked about this a little bit before. We said, what, how do you decide when you shut down, right? So you know, I don't know, you know if you own a business, you know, I don't know, maybe when you were a kid, you were selling lemonade, you were selling something, right? Fundraiser, whatever it was. Um, if you had your own business, um, you know, or your parents, the point is, when do you decide to shut down? Okay, do you wait? Do you wait for the economy to get better? What not? In economics, I mean, we ha in, when you're when you're an economist, you have a couple rules to follow, okay? And the basic rule goes as as so. Basically, says that the average variable cost, right? or your total variable cost, either way you look at it, right, are extremely important in dictating how you decide if you're gonna shut down or not, okay? So, typically speaking, um, your total fixed cost, right, is, is a fixed input, right? It's fixed, right? It's not gonna change no matter what happens, right? But TVC changes, total variable cost changes, right? ABC changes. Okay, so TVC is extremely important in deciding whether you're going to have a profit or not. Now, the simple rule is that if your total revenue is greater than your total variable cost, right, you're making money, okay, and you produce more. If total revenue is less than TVC, then you definitely need to uh, shut down, okay? Shut down. Okay, now you know. Let this kind of resonate in your mind a little bit because in the next lesson we're going to do the last part of perfect competition, um, which is going to be um, just drawing you guys a shutdown, um, you know, scenario when you shut down, and a little more things about long run and short run differences. But we're almost done with perfect competition. It's it's a huge block, but I guarantee it's going to be on your um, test. So that being said, you know, we talked a little bit about shutdown. We said, okay, if total revenue is less than TVC, you probably should think, be thinking about shutting down. We'll come back with the lesson. Don't worry about this too much. The next lesson we'll come back with uh, how do you shut down and we'll show you different points in the graph to show you what happens when, okay? But, you know, most importantly, the three major takeaways from this class, uh, from this particular class, were understanding how to graph a profit for a firm, right, in a perfect competition, a loss scenario, and a normal profit, okay? And those three situations were extremely, um, you know, important. So, with that, I'm just going to give you guys your homework question. It's going to be should come as no surprise. Uh, draw me a um, a loss scenario for a uh, firm that is in perfect competition. So again, the question is, draw me a loss scenario when you're having a, a um, firm in perfect competition. Okay, so that should not be a big issue for you guys. Um, hope to see you guys with the answer to the next one. Um, for now, thank you so much for joining me.